Let's discuss 23rd question which says prove that the product of lengths of perpendiculars drawn from the points this and this to the line x by y cos theta plus y by v sin theta equal to 1 is b square. Okay, pretty interesting actually. How is this interesting? Actually, this is a result from the chapter something called conic sections. Now, conic sections is a chapter which comes after straight lines in class 11th and uh, what is special about these points? L product of lengths of perpendiculars drawn from the points this and this. This particular question is related to something called an ellipse. So I'll explain the concept of conic section. If you have studied conic section, you'll be able to understand this. Otherwise, you can skip this completely, right? Skip this explanation part of conic section, right? For an ellipse, for an ellipse, these are two focus, right? For the standard ellipse, x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1. These are the foci, right? And this is equation of any tangent. Oh, product of lengths of perpendiculars is equal to the square of the semi-minor axis. That's a property, that's a, uh, let's say, high, one of the highlights of ellipse, right? And questions have been asked in the competitive exams in the past based on this property and similar other properties as well. Right, that's all that we have to discuss from that chapter of conic sections for this question. But, 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 for this particular question, from the point of view of straight lengths, let's talk about this question. So, we are interested in, we are interested in this product of the lengths of perpendiculars from this point on this and this point on this. Let's call the product P1, let's call the other product P2. So line, line is important, okay. Line is x by a cos theta plus y by b sin theta. y by b sin theta equals 1, okay. We want to simplify this line somehow, maybe, may not be. This is square root of a square plus b square, okay, and this is minus square root of a square plus b square, and this becomes 0, right? Okay, so I don't think so we need to simplify this, do we? No. At max, what we can do is we can take the LCM because these denominators will create a problem. So, why not take the LCM? This becomes uh, bx cos theta plus ay sin theta is equal to ab. This is what I want to write it as. Now, for this particular point, the product P1, sorry, the perpendicular length P1 is equal to, for this, substitute this point over here, b times under root of a square minus b square times cos theta, okay, plus 0 minus ab upon under root of coefficients of x and coefficient of y squared added. This is b square cos square theta plus a square sin square theta. This is what I get over here and a modulus and a modulus. This is p1 for us. Similarly, can we write p2 as well? Yes, for p2, Instead of square root of a square plus minus b square, we have minus square root of a square minus b square and this is still 0. So, this is minus b square root of a square minus b square and plus 0, okay, there is a cos theta as well. Don't forget that cos theta, yes. So, there is a cos theta plus 0 minus a b and a modulus. In the denominator, you get similar expressions because b cos theta a sin theta squared b cos theta squared a square sin square theta as well. This is what you get. Right. So, p1 and p2 have been found and now we will be looking at product of the lengths of perpendiculars that is p1 and p2 product. So, let us talk about the product p1, p2. What does this look like? Okay. So, we have modulus of this, modulus of this. In the denominator, you have similar expressions, right? And uh, let us write this expression. This is b under root of a square minus b square, okay, and times you have cos theta and then you have minus a b, this is one term in the modulus. In the other modulus, you have similar expressions, but you observe that this is minus, this is also minus, that modulus will take up that minus and what we will be left with is b under root of a square minus b square times cos theta plus a b, precisely. This is what you will be left with, right? plus a b over here. Take this carefully. Take a look at this carefully. And in the denominator, under root of this, under root of this, same expressions, under root squared will actually give me b square cos square theta plus a square sin square theta in the denominator. Okay. We are almost at the point of simplification. Observe in the numerator, you have modulus of x into modulus of y, which is equal to modulus of x y, right? So, let us multiply them together. Before multiplying, I observe that this is first term minus AB. This is first term plus AB. Oh, 
So this is a plus b, a minus b form. Yes. So when we multiply them, when we multiply them, what will what will it become? In the modulus, you'll get first term squared minus second term squared. This is b square, a square minus b square, cos square theta minus a square b square in the numerator. In the denominator, you have b square cos square theta plus a square sin square theta over here. This is what you have. Is that okay? Yes. And one more thing, in the numerator, do you observe that b square is there in the first term, b square is there in the second term, we can take that b square common, yes, b square and modulus of b square is same as b square, right. In the bracket, you get a square cos square theta in the modulus and minus b square cos square theta and this is minus a square, this remains upon, upon you have the same expression again, this is b square cos square theta plus a square sin square theta. Okay, where are we going with this? Oh, we have almost simplified this, right? Just one more step remains and what is that? Okay, this is b square cos square theta, this is b cos square cos square theta. Our target is to finally get this b square, right? So these two terms should be exactly same, yes. Do you observe a square cos square theta minus a square? a square will come out common and cos square theta minus one. Cos square theta minus one will be minus of sin square theta and I can deal with that. Yes, this is b square. And this is modulus of minus a square sin square theta minus b square cos square theta. Once again, the modulus will take care of this minus and we can write it as this. This is b square cos square theta in the denominator plus a square sin square theta in the denominator. Over here, please take care of this. This will be minus a square sin square theta minus b square cos square theta. The minus can come out common from this modulus without worrying about anything. And this is what I'll be getting after this. Okay, and these two terms are exactly same. Yes, these two terms are exactly same. Do you observe this is a perfect square, this is a perfect square. Adding them together will be a positive quantity. So modulus is no longer useful over here. And yes, this will be always positive. This will get cancelled with this. These two terms will get cancelled and this will be b square only. So product of p1 and p2 is equal to b square. That is what we wanted to prove. Hence proved. Hence proved. Product of the lengths of perpendiculars drawn from the points this and this to the line this is b square. Or, or as I mentioned initially in the question that this is a question based on properties of ellipse, right? So you can read it in another way that product of the lengths of perpendiculars drawn from the foci to any tangent of the ellipse is equal to square of semi-minor axis. That's what we have, right? That's the answer for this particular question. That's the complete proof of this particular question over here, right? This is 23rd question. Let's move on to the next one after this.